I could not be more upset at this point with the way uh, Jake Tapper conducted this interview with uh, Karen Finney, uh, Jonah Goldberg, Representative Hillary Shelton, and former uh, Vice President's help, uh, Mark Short. I want you to think about this. Uh, he felt safe enough to castigate both Karen Finney and Representative Hillary Shelton. He think he needed to correct them for the statements that they made, but for the asinine statements made by Jonah Goldberg and Mark Short, Oh, that they, he just let it slide by as if it had some validity. I want you to listen to this, and then we'll take it on the other side. Uh, you flipped your Trump district in Michigan blue. And I'm wondering, obviously, there is no appetite in Congress for the kind of sweeping gun measures that Democrats would like to pass. But what about something like red flag laws, aggressive ones, where people can really try to keep guns out of the hands of people who are going through crises? Is that any, is there any, possibility of, of bipartisanship there? No, I, I think that there is, Jake. And uh, one thing that I am seeing every day in Congress is a renewed interest to address this national trauma. Now, this goes far beyond the, the carnage that we see bodies stacked up behind an outlet mall. Look at all those people fleeing the mall, the trauma that uh, it reverberates around our country, the mental health crisis that's rising in our young people who have been forced to bear the burden of gun violence in our country, which is now the number one killer of children in the United States of America. This is a uniquely American problem, and we don't have to live like this. I don't think that there is a a, a frontal way at gun control that pol politically will work in any time soon. So if there are ways to do to make the prop to work the problem, I think it's going to be in the realm of, of of mental health. Red flag laws, I think, are an important thing. I'm very much in favor of those. Part of the problem is that this is these mass shootings are a form of social contagion where it is people are are, are have a switch flipped when they see this and then they try to and they copycat. And we saw similar things with like political assassinations in the 60s and 70s. And then it just sort of stopped. That's, I don't think we can just wait for it to stop because it's such a huge problem, but understanding that it's a, it's a socially complex thing and doing things at the margins that help rather than hurt, I think, is the only thing, approach you can take. But it's, this is shameful. The number one killer of children, and there's nothing. I mean, that's obscene, right? If, we, if it was a flu, we would find a vaccine. And I think we have to talk about this as an example of the corrosive impact of money in politics. In Tennessee, the Tennessee legislature, they actually went out of session without passing gun legislation, despite the fact that the mothers from that school where the shooting occurred were there every day for the last two weeks, begging them to just take up legislation. And what, what did they do? They actually went out of session a week early because the gun lobby pushed them and said, don't you dare consider any legislation. I have to say, I... I, I Respectfully disagree that money is the is the issue here. I think this is it's a culture. I, I think it's a cultural issue. I think I think people feel uh, uh, an attachment to guns that that is that is beyond a, a five thousand yeah. dollar. The uh, NRA is but bankrupt. I, it's, the, I, it's voters who care a lot about gun rights. But they I, still I, let me put show pressure you this, on. I mean, Congressman Mark Short. Let me just show you this. <laughs> so this, this is this is policies that the American people support, according to a recent uh, Fox poll uh, in, in April. 87% support universal background checks, 81% raising the age to 21 for the purchase of all guns, 80% requiring mental health checks, 80% red flag laws. Those don't seem like unreasonable intrusions on con the constitutional uh, right. Well, I think that if it was really money in politics or the impact of the gun lobby, the reality is that Democrats had control of the House, the Senate, and the White House last Congress that didn't pass gun control legislation. So it's not so easy as we want to portray it as, Jake. But I also think the reality is that this year there have been 13,000 deaths by gun violence. The vast majority, 95% of them, are in inner cities. We have some of the strictest gun control laws in the country. We're not being tough on crime in general. I think we can actually have a much stronger impact if we got serious about getting tough on crime in our inner cities. But then why— Sorry. No, no, no. Respectfully, Mark, last Congress, we did pass a once in a generation safer communities bill to, to combat this. There, I have personally co-sponsored eight different pieces of common sense, you know, gun control legislation that has the majority of Americans backing it and Republicans refuse to bring it to the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, we can preserve the Second Amendment and protect our children. This is not a zero sum game. But he's, he's, if I could just make the point that Mark's right in the sense that 
the AR-15 mass shootings get attention for obvious reasons, but it is the one-offs in the inner city that are actually more deadly uh, and, and well, bigger threats to the survival of America. Well, what have Republicans done about it? Their debt ceiling proposal defunds the police, cuts tens stop. of thousands on, of law enforcement it. jobs. Yeah, to, I mean, to be fair, they, they, they haven't it. been specific about any of the cuts, uh, which but, is, is not a compliment. But in, in reality, but it, but what are accurate. Republicans doing about it? The Democrats are, are out there with bills that will increase law enforcement on the streets, the funding the police. The cities and, are Democrat controlled, you know. OK, Democrat but there's also been plenty of studies that show actually crime rates are higher in red states than blue states. So if we're going to go down that road, let's talk <laughs> some facts. I want to clarify, though, I'm not saying that money in politics is the only reason. Right. I'm saying with the numbers you just showed about the will of the American people, there should be more, you would think, Republicans should be more willing to come to the table and pass legislation. What, what Karen Finney said was absolutely truth. It's money in politics that allows us to have the horrendous gun laws that we have. It is money in politics that have purchased all the politicians that prevent us from doing what is necessary to pass good gun control laws that everybody can live by and reduces crime, not only in the inner cities, but also these terrorists that go out there and just mass kill people. Now, what did what did uh, Jake Tapper do? When she said it's money in politics, he said, well, I don't know if it's money in politics, uh, Karen, but you know, uh, it is money in politics, but here's what he shows right after that to show you the inconsistency of the discussion when it comes to guns. He shows that 80% plus of Americans wanted background checks. They wanted to restrict guns for people, kids that are over, that are under 21 years old. There's a lot of gun control measures that Americans want, over 80%. And he felt sufficiently correct to castigate Kenny, uh, Karen Finney for saying that. Now, Representative Hillary Shulton, she points out that the new budget that the Republicans passed defunds the police. Well, then he says, well, you know, they didn't specify exactly what they want to cut. Well, you know, she should have come back and said, you know, Jake Tapper, you're partially right. They want to defund everything because given that they're saying hold things steady at the 2022 level, that's the only way you can do it. Defund just about everything. So you're right about that, Jake Tapper. They don't only want to defund the police. They want to defund your social security. They want to defund your, your, your health care. They want to defund just about everything. But again, he felt it was good to castigate her. Now, Jonah Goldberg, I think he made a fool of himself. He's like, oh, we can't do anything about this gun violence because I think it's like copycats, you know, you know, back in the sixties when they were shooting off leaders, uh, shooting leaders, and it just then stopped. And so he wants it to just stop. But he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Let's not just wait for it to stop. We, we, but we can only do certain things on the edges. He showed a certain level of impotence. And did Jake Tapper said, wait a minute, sir. With all the, that with the high percentage of Americans wanted good gun control, we could actually do it. We don't have to listen to when you say things like, oh, it's cultural or... No, that's not true. The polls do not say that. Now, the last, lastly, Mark Short comes up when, when uh, Shotton comes out and says, you know, they want to defund the police. And Mark Short says, well, look, the reality is Democrats were in power for, uh, for a while and they did nothing. You know, given that, that um, the, the, the host was able to correct Finney. Jake Tapper was able to correct Finney when he uh, incorrectly correct Finney when she said it's money in politics that caused the problem. Why didn't he correct Short and said, well, Short, the Democrats couldn't do anything because they do not have a filibuster-proof Senate. And therefore, there's nothing the Democrats could pass that would come into law because Republicans are blocking it, because Republicans would block it. This just shows the leaning of the mainstream media is always to the right. It's always to protect uh, re re uh, Republicans when they come on the shows. It caters to them. It coddles them. And uh, progressives and Democrats have just have to claw their way to try to get that message out through mainstream media. To which I say, maybe Karen Finney, maybe Hillary Shulton should start doing more politics done right as opposed to doing 
MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC. Well, do them, do them too. But maybe you should come here where you actually will get a fair hearing. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.